Hey guys, this is Elise. Welcome back to this project, Catholic Mission Friends for Intersectional Racial Healing. Today, I'm so excited to introduce one of my very best friends and one of the panelists, Adora. Hello, everyone. Elise, thank you for having me on this project. I'm very excited. Oh, I'm so excited. So um, in introducing you, I, I have a couple questions today. Um, the first one is, I'm curious to hear from you, uh, as well as for everyone else, um, what interested you in this project? How come, what prompted you to get involved? Yeah, I just thought it was a great idea that you wanted to have people share like explicitly intimate facets of their stories because I think something that can be a block for people in engaging in racial dialogue is that they feel that like racism is over, slavery ended 400 years ago, very like large obvious laws and stuff no longer exist. So then their question can be, what role do I even have? Is this even a thing? Are people just like hung up about something that happened in the past? But I think this conversation is really going to help illuminate that there are still like trickle down impacts of those laws that even though they don't exist, they impact people's lives today. They impact people's cultures today. Um, so I just think it's important that you're helping open this conversation in a way that's like safe that people can engage with without kind of like getting defensive. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing into view that we're not just in our own little planets, but we all intersect and we all impact each other, um, which immediately comes up with a follow up question for for what what I'm curious, you're hoping that you'll get out of this project that others can get out of this project or involved as well as those who are staying tuned and, and viewing. Yeah, I hope this project really just helps people examine their own hearts. I think everything kind of starts interiorly. Um, so I hope that people can approach listening to what people say during your interviews with humility and that it helps them examine, okay, what roles do I play in racism? What roles can I play in like helping eradicate racism and helping lift up every single person's dignity? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's such a good intention. I love it. And I'm so excited that you're part of this. So um, I would love for, you know, cause you're my, you're one of my best friends. So I love you and I think that you're amazing. And, love you <laughs> and um, I would just love for people to get to know you a little bit as far as like through the scope of this project, you know, whatever you're comfortable sharing as much or as little detail as you wish. Um, I'm curious to, to hear a couple stories that you feel comfortable sharing um, in this space that were racial experiences for you. Yeah. Um, I think the story that's really like woven throughout my life and something that I really had to intentionally engage in and fight is the idea of beauty. So I'm very, very dark skinned. Um, I'm a first generation American. My parents are from Uganda and I noticed from a young age growing up just based on like watching movies and stuff that people with my skin tone were not considered attractive. People with my skin tone were never the love interest. Um, we were the funny best friend. We were the sassy black friend, you know, something like that. We more existed for comedic relief than for like any sense of beauty or even being able to like uphold what is a woman, um, what makes a woman beautiful. Like that was never seen in people who looked like me. I noticed that from a super young age. I remember in first grade, I went to a Disney princess party and you know princess tiana did not exist back then i'm really glad she does but she did not exist back then and so there was no obvious choice for me like there was a redhead at the party so she was ariel you know someone's was cinderella but i was jasmine because it was like the closest i could get but not that close but the closest i could get and people at the party were like you think you look like jasmine it's like okay i'm just trying to go to this party you know um but yeah, so that was very obvious to me that like people with my skin tone were not considered beautiful. That has been like the single most hurtful thing race wise I've experienced. And that, like I said, just continues to thread through my story today. I had to very intentionally decide like when I was in early college, so maybe seven years ago, I had to very intentionally decide that despite not being validated by the culture around me, and this exists in multiple cultures where you know, dark skin is considered less desirable and being lighter skinned is considered more desirable. And I think that's just because of like Eurocentric beauty standards from colonization and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just had to very intentionally decide that I was going to be beautiful anyway, you know? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad that seven years ago or more that you were like, no, I'm going to do radical self-acceptance and I'm going to love myself first. And, um, and today starting, you know, with this project or as a continuation of that, um, we can help teach other people to love you the right way too, you know, individually and people that look like us, people who have melanin in our yes. <laughs> Beautiful melanin. Yeah. And so, um, you know, with what you're sharing, it brings to mind that how crucial it is that the conversations, the yeah, attitudes in the environment, right. That are impacting our internal dialogues. And like you were saying at the beginning of this introductory video that, um, most of this work needs to start here, right? A lot of it has to be here because we could change laws, we could change words, whatever, all day long, but it has to start here for, for a real change to happen generationally, um, especially in creating a better world for the future, right? So, right. Um, so I'm curious, you, know, you, you mentioned stories that are related to the exterior visual component and culture is visual, language, and, um, the discourse that happens about these two things between these two spaces of written and spoken language. I'm curious um, to also hear whatever you're comfortable sharing as much or as little um, stories of racial experience when it comes to words, to, to language, whether it's language development or blah, like think right. words that are spoken. Um, curious to hear any, any, any of the above? Yeah, um, I think two things come to mind immediately. So one is that, as I mentioned earlier, my parents are immigrants from Uganda and the language I grew up speaking is called Luganda. So that was my first language before I even learned English. And when I went to school, um, I didn't realize, and my parents couldn't really see it coming. They didn't know either, you know, um, but every black person I'd interacted with pretty much up until that point spoke Luganda and was a Ugandan. So when I went to school, I just thought that like being a black equaled being Ugandan. So I walked up to this girl and I just started speaking to her in Luganda and she just looked at me like, who's this girl? <laughs> What's she saying to me? And I stopped speaking Luganda from that point on. I just threw that away. Okay. So I wish that that had not happened because uh, it would be beautiful to speak fluently now. I can only speak at a very limited capacity and understand in a limited capacity, but um, you know, just being young, I didn't, I didn't have the full information. And then also with language, um, when it comes to English, which is the language I'm speaking most of the time, sometimes people, and this happened a lot more when I was younger. I think people are kind of more mature now, don't really talk this way, which is great. But people would comment that I spoke like a white person and they would either mean it as an insult or as a compliment. But even when it's a compliment, it's an insult because you're trying to say that like something about my blackness is not authentic um, when you say that. So if I expressed offense or took offense at the comment, people would be like, well, I'm just trying to say you're articulate okay, then why don't you just say I'm articulate? Why do you have to attach that to whiteness? You know, I think that's like the thought patterns that we don't realize we have coming to play. Um, and then also I work in radio, so people don't see me unless they happen to meet me in person, but a lot of people listen to me on the radio. So um, sometimes I meet people and they're always surprised that I'm black, like always surprised that I'm black. Um, people have been like, I thought you were Japanese based on the way you say your name, your last name, I don't know. And people have thought that I was white, but yeah, people are always like, oh, you're black. But there are some Ugandans who listen and they know my name and they're like, oh, no, Uganda, you're my tribe, hey, what's up? So it's just interesting to see how you're perceived because with radio, you're just behind a mic, no one has seen your image, um, but then you learn what people are perceiving your image to be. And that has been very interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Adora, thank you so much for sharing those, um, those few stories and letting people get to know you a bit today. 
Um, I'm so excited to do this project with you. I love yeah. all of our conversations. Um, I just think you're the, one of the best humans on the planet. So I'm just so excited. <laughs> And Girl, thank you for organizing everything. I think this is going to have wide community impact and cause a lot of people to examine their hearts and like see what they can do, what attitudes they have that they might not realize. Oh, I hope so. Well, we can, we can lift our intentions, right? Yes. So yeah, with that, we'll close today's intro video and um, just invite all of you who are viewing this to stay tuned, um, engage, ask questions, submit um, your, your feedback forms to each online event of the video. And um, with that, we'll, we just want to say God bless you. God bless you, girl. <laughs>